Hey, Kevin, going into surgery? Boy, that's just about what it is. This is the very first Everlast welder I ever got. Way back in 2015, so it's six years old. And it's been just a real workhorse. It's the MTS, so MIG TIG stick welder, you know, multi-process machine. So it's the MTS 251 SI, which they don't even make anymore. The problem I was having was after you know, an hour, you know, hour and a half worth of welding with it, it would over temp. I'd get a warning on the control panel over temp and shut itself down. I have to let it sit and cool off a little while and then it would fire back up again and you can go back to welding, but for a minute or two. And it would over temp again, over temp again, over temp. You know, if you leave it sit overnight, yeah, you get an hour, hour and a half out of it. And then, boy, it's just not holding, it's just not cooling itself off anymore. So I thought, well, let's change a few parts and pieces and see what we get. Tech support said it could be one of two things. It could either be this control board is just going bad, or it could be one or both of the fans. And I thought, aha, there's a clue right there. So while the machine was still all together, fire it up, run it until it over temps, let it cool off enough that it would come back on again. And then I just put my hand over both of these cooling fans and the bottom fan seemed to be drawing a lot more air than the top fan was, I think. It was just a bad fan. I think just one fan it was, go it was gone bad or is going bad. They were both turning, but I don't think this one was turning up to speed. So I got two new fans. I got a new control board. Let's put them in. Let's put it together. See what happens. This is the front of the machine. You have to take the handle off the top first, and then you have a whole bunch of screws and that whole metal plate comes off. You know, the whole metal cover comes off, finally exposes the inside of the machine. So this is the high frequency board for your TIG welding. That's where the little points are. You have to go adjust every now and again. The two main boards of the machine, this actually runs 99% of it. This board right here, this is actually the cooling system control board. Now this is the new board. I got, I got a new one to replace the old one. So here's where the wire actually goes through, you know, through the chassis of the machine itself into this double plug, and this plug plugs into one of the terminals on the control board itself. So the first thing I have to do is get these two wires, this red and this black. I need to release them and pop them out of the plug so I can put the new ones in. And once I get those wires out, I can snake them down. I can get the new fan with the new wires, snake the wires back up, plug it back in, put it all back together. So I know you take like a little jeweler screwdriver. You can reach down inside there. There's a little catch on the wire. And if you just push those two catches down, now the other end, you know, the other wires pop out. Snake him out of the way. Before I put these in, this is on, on the new fan. I've already just picked up those little tabs just to get them up in the air a little bit again. So when I put them inside the plug, they'll click into place. So let's feed these wires in. And a habit I got into long time ago doing any kind of electrical work, especially when you have different color wires like this, is I already marked the plug with a magic marker. So the black wire goes to the black mark that I put on the plug. Click and click. Cool. And then this wire just plugs right back in here. This control board is, will just sit right here for a moment. I'll just go ahead and reinstall this fan where it belongs in here, get the other fan out, then I just have to snake that wiring harness out where it plugs in over here, run it all the way back down through, get the old fan out, put the new fan in, snake it back up, plug it back in. So get your cold drink, turn on your music, and watch. Let's just go ahead and change this fan out now before I put the other one in. And then I'll put the other one back in as well.
Here's my other wire. So now that that wire is in place, I can go ahead and just get everybody situated the way they belong. I have these two little white bosses here with threads in the top of them. So tuck these wires out of the way, move this wire, and you can look right down through the top of the control board and see that the holes finally line up. So let me get those screws. Thank God for magnets. Just get them snug, but not, not over tight. Now uh, we can just stick our fans back in. Don't forget your little spacers. I may have to get the camera person with her little fingers over here for this part. Okay. So that goes like that. That spacer has to go in like that on the inside. One of those nuts. So now we can just go ahead and tighten those up. Cool. Now I just got to get my gas line, which is this clear hose with this little stainless fitting on it. And it goes up against the inside of the bulkhead and then you have the brass fitting here that goes on the outside of the machine and this is where your gas line actually hooks to go to the bottle. So I just need to tighten this up now. Don't forget you need a wrench on the inside and the outside. There's one last connector that I took off the control board right here. Don't forget to hook him up. Now it's just a bunch of screws here on the back. You know, get the cover on, more screws up there, put the handle on and then I can finally put it back on the cart put some gas to it, set up the welder, and weld with it, and we'll find out. So Kevin, hey. these uh, Everlast machines are bulletproof. This is the first one you've ever worked on. What, why do you think something went wrong? This has been a very, very good machine. It, it has put up with a lot of abuse. It has been running here in this shop uh, since 2015 when I got it. And, you know, this is not an air-conditioned shop. All I've got is an evaporative cooler on the really hot days. But, you know, uh, 95 to 110 in here, yeah, that's pretty much normal during the summer. And it's been just bulletproof. It's been fine. But one of the things that you can do to kill these fans is when you try to blow out the machine to tr try to blow the dust out, if you get a little lazy and you don't want to take the whole top of the machine off so you can blow it out with low pressure air correctly, a lot of guys will come over with a compressed air right from the compressor, 120 PSI, stick the hose over here and give it a squirt. Well, what happens is that high pressure air spins that fan up so high, so much higher than it was ever meant to turn, you wind up burning the brushes out of it. You, you know, you, you just, you overheat the motor, you wear it out way, way too quickly, and then they don't work as well. They don't have, they don't come up to speed. That's what I think happened is somebody, you know, tried to blow it out without taking it apart, without shutting it off, and burned up one of the fans, I think. You know, let me put it all together, let me try it. That'll definitely say yes it was or no it wasn't. But the amount of dust that was inside this machine when I took the cover off was horrible. You gotta be good about cleaning these machines out or the dust just lies on all of these electrical components and it acts like an insulator. It keeps the heat in the electrical component itself instead of the fans being able to blow the heat away. And that'll burn things up too. So let me get all this back together. If you're curious how this all turns out, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll send you a message. I'll let you know whether it actually worked or not. Uh, I do appreciate you all watching. I hope you know getting a little sneak peek inside one of these machines with all this, ooh, I don't know what it is, stuff. 
you know, is, is interesting to you. And, oh yeah, if you ever have to change the fans on your machine, this might point you in the right direction and figure out how to do it. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me, and I'll see you next time. Some left over. I had parts left over, yes. If you do this often enough, you get a brand new machine.